Before we started the presentation, we need to know the meaning of soldering. Soldering is a technique that involves using a filler called solder to connect two or more metal components. Putting the solder in the joint between the components after it has melted and solidified creates a permanent link. Sustainable development in manufacturing procedures is defined as using technologies and procedures that reduce negative effects on the environment while maintaining financial sustainability and social accountability. There are some ways soldering can be more effective in the manufacturing process. There are numerous methods for reducing the amount of energy used during soldering. Here are some suggestions to reduce your energy consumption in the soldering process. First, we can make soldering iron settings ideal. We can make this happen by setting the iron soldering temperature as low as it will go while still producing higher quality of soldering results. Utilizing the minimal temperature can drastically minimize energy usage for soldering, because if we use high temperatures when using soldering, it will require more energy to use for soldering. After that, we can decrease the energy used for soldering by preheating the soldering iron before we use it. By using this method, we can prevent long periods of excessive power usage when we soldering. Next, we should utilize a soldering iron stand or holder when we are not using a soldering iron. The iron stand will assist with energy conversion by shutting off or lowering the power on the iron soldering when it is not in use. This will prevent any accidental burn that can cause a hazard to happen and also can reduce the usage of energy. Lastly, we can invest by buying soldering irons that are specifically made to consume less power and that are energy efficient. We can choose various models that save energy when we use them. Soldering with renewable energy sources has the potential to significantly lessen the environmental impact of energy use when we were using soldering. We can apply renewable energy sources when we use soldering by installing solar energy systems to supply energy to our soldering materials that needed electricity. The soldering iron can be powered directly by solar energy, or it can be used to charge batteries on our soldering iron that can be used later on. This option will be effective when elements like the amount of sunlight available or the strength of solar installation power our soldering iron. We also can check if the utility company in our area has a green energy grid that uses to power our soldering iron. By using a green energy grid, we will accidentally promote the usage of renewable energy that powers our soldering iron. Lastly, we can consider buying renewable energy credits, RECs, if we think that the energy that has been used is not practical. This also will promote the usage of renewable energy on soldering while reducing our electric usage on soldering. Soldering waste reduction techniques can reduce negative environmental effects and increase sustainability. We can use just enough solder at each joint. If we use too much solder on a joint, this will make a waste of material that used to solder. Next, we also can use lead solder free in our soldering. Lead free solder is easy to recycle and is more beneficial in terms of environmentally. We can also recycle solder and solder waste by gathering it in one place. There are many programs that are offered by manufacturers to recycle the solders. We just need to make sure that the recycled solder is of a quality that will allow it to be used again in the soldering process. Lastly, we can train soldering technicians in education on waste reduction of soldering techniques. We can encourage people to understand the value of waste reduction on solder, proper soldering methods, and others. Soldering also can have a smaller negative environmental impact if green chemistry principles are applied. We can choose lead-free solder or other solder that has less impact on the environment. Lead-free solder also is less hazardous and simpler to recycle. Next, we also can reduce or do away with dangerous compounds during the soldering process. These alternatives are less detrimental to the environment and also to human health. After that, in soldering, the right flux application is essential. We can optimize the way to apply the flux by controlling the amount of flux that needs to be used. Lastly, we can utilize energy-efficient soldering tools and optimize soldering iron settings that will help in using less energy while soldering. It also has an impact on the environment also cost-effective. Soldering can help lessen the process's negative effects on the environment by using sustainable materials. 
First, we can use solder that is lead-free because it is easy to recycle and safer to use in the soldering process. We also can choose to use biodegradable masks instead of traditional solder masks. By using this, we can reduce their negative effects on the environment, and also they can be decomposed quickly after they have been used. Next, we can implement appropriate soldering material waste management procedures. To ensure this, we can collaborate with recycling businesses or facilities that specialized in recycling solders. Lastly, we can examine the entire environmental impact of soldering materials by performing a life cycle assessment, LCA. This examination will look at how the materials affect the environment from the extraction of raw materials to the disposal of the material. We can make sure that materials and choices and areas to improve based on the LCA results that we made. The effectiveness and productivity of the soldering process can be significantly improved by designing items that can be used to solder. In order to apply this method when we solder, we can organize the circuit board's components so that soldering can be done with ease. We also can avoid crowding that might disrupt the soldering operation, and we also need to leave some space between the solder for the iron tip soldering to reach with ease. Next, in order to avoid thermal damage during solder, we need to manage thermal when we design a product. In order to do that, we can make sure that heat-sensitive components have enough space between them and have heat dissipation routes around them. We can achieve this by designing heat sinks to achieve the best heat distribution. After that, wherever solders need to be applied, we can include the solder mask or solder window when we soldering a material. As a result of this, the solder that we have applied may be placed precisely and solder bridges are less likely to form and also protect the surrounding area from surplus flux residue. Finally, in order to make soldering easier, use the right pad and trace designs in soldering a material. Design pads and traces for surface mount components that have enough surface area are good solder retention. We also can use larger pads to facilitate soldering and enhance solder bond quality in soldering. Investing in staff soldering training is an essential step to guaranteeing excellent work, effectiveness, and safety. First, we can start by offering the employee thorough instructions on the fund fundamentals of soldering. This will include solder kinds, fluxes, teaching on how to use a soldering iron and soldering joints that were made. They also can practice safe soldering procedures when they were using iron solder. Next, the employer also can provide advanced soldering skills and cover more sophisticated soldering methods. With this plan, they can learn on improving their soldering skills, involves in specialized soldering applications. They also can learn on repairing and reworks the iron solder. After that, the employer should ensure that their employee receives proper safety training. Employees can learn how to maintain and use every soldering material. This will include controlling temperature regulation, and they also can learn how to fix typical soldering equipment problem. Lastly, they can ensure the quality control procedure and inspection on soldering is in good condition. They can learn on how to spot typical soldering flaws such as solder bridge, chili joints, and others. They also can be provide guidance on how to use magnification equipment, conduct visual inspections, and adhere to quality standards. Life Cycle Assessment, LCA, is a thorough methodology used to evaluate a product's or process's environmental impact throughout the course of its full life cycle, from the extraction of raw materials to disposal. An LCA for soldering entails evaluating a number of phases and elements connected with the soldering process. First, the employer can set a clear goal and scope specification of the soldering LCA to the employees. With this, they can learn on finding the functional items that can represent the output or objective of the soldering process. They also can establish the system boundaries and others during the soldering process. After that, employees can gather information about the inputs, raw material and others, outputs and other processes that are involved. This also includes compiling data on solder alloys, fluxes, energy usage and other pertinent factors. Next, the data that has been gathered from the inventory. In order to do this, the effects must be categorized according to different environmental variables, such as energy use, greenhouse gas emission, and others. Employees also can measure and analyze the importance of these environmental impacts on soldering processes. 
Lastly, they can determine the chances to enhance soldering's environmental performance based on the LCA data. This also entails improving energy efficiency, cutting down on material waste, and switching to fluxes or solder alloys that have less of an impact on the environment during the soldering process. Recyclability in soldering refers to the capacity to salvage and repurpose soldering components, materials, and waste products after they have served their purpose. Reduce waste, conserve resources, and lessen the environmental impact of the soldering process by implementing recyclability practices. First, we can select recyclable solder alloys for soldering projects. Lead-free solders, including tin copper, are frequently used in the soldering process because they can be recycled more easily than lead-based solder also. When we need to create new solder material, we can separate the solder, purify it, and reprocess it before we can use it again. Next, we can use soldering techniques known as closed-loop systems to collect and reuse the byproduct solder. We also can gather solder dross, extra solder, and other soldering items that are not being used to be recycled and reused again in future. After that, we can manage and recycle the flux waste properly. By removing impurities using procedures like filtering, distillation, or chemical treatment, and the fluxes can be recovered and reused again. As a result, we can lessen the waste that has been produced and fewer fresh fluxes that are being consumed. Lastly, they can also investigate the possibilities for recycling and recovering parts. They can salvage parts and recover them back the components for later use when items on the circuit board are at the end of their lives. This will lessen the need for new parts and cut down on electronics waste when using soldering machines. In conclusion, for the benefit of our generation, we need to ensure that products that are being created from soldering processes must be sustainable as possible. This is because the manufacturing sector has a substantial negative influence on the environment and society. Manufacturers can lessen resource depletion, cut waste production, reduce pollution, and enhance community well-being by incorporating sustainability concepts. By implementing sustainability in manufacturing, we can achieve several advantages from it such as improved efficiency, conserves resources, and reduces operating costs. Support from the government in the form of laws, rules, and incentives is essential for advancing sustainable manufacturing. This law can be implemented to make sure that manufacturers are compliant and responsible for their company. The government also can make investments in the development of cleaner technology for manufacturers. In summary, manufacturing sustainability is a necessity that necessitates a concerted effort by producers, regulators, customers, and other stakeholders. We can build a more sustainable future, save the environment, and advance social well-being while preserving economic prosperity by incorporating sustainability into production processes and decision-making.